Good day everyone, I am Maricel Anki and today I will be going to report about barrier method and permanent method of family planning. What is barrier method? Barrier method of birth control act as barriers to keep the men's sperm from reaching the woman's egg. Some barrier methods also protect against sexually transmitted infections or STIS. A few barrier methods are spermicide, condoms, sponge, cervical cups, diaphragms can be bought in most drugstore. So the main function of barrier method is to prevent pregnancy by physically blocking the sperm from, from the uterus sa panahon sa pakighilawas. The first type of barrier method is spermicide. Spermicide is a contraceptive substance that destroys sperm inserted vaginally prior to intercourse to prevent pregnancy. As a contraception, spermicide may be used alone. However, the pregnancy rate experienced by couples using only spermicide is higher than that than the couple using other methods. Spermicide block the cervix or the opening of the uterus and slow sperm down to make it harder for them to swim to an egg. Ang spermicide mahimong gamiton nga maginasara. Ang rate sa pagmabdos nga nasinati sa, sa mga magtiayon nga nagamit lamang sa spermicide mas taas kaysa sa mga magtiayon nga nagamit o ubang mga pamaagi. Spermicide contains chemicals to stop sperm from getting to an egg. They come in several different forms like cream, gel, foam, film, and suppositories. Spermicides should be used with another birth control method such as condoms or a diaphragm. They be used alone but are not a very effective, effective that way. So, if you're trying to prevent pregnancy, you should combine it with another form of birth control like a condom or diaphragm. Ang spermicide, ano, adunay mga chemical aron mapugnan ang sperm sa pagkuha sa usaka itlog. Male condom. A male condom is a thin sheet of latex rubber made to fit on a man's erect penis to prevent the passage of sperm cells by forming a barrier that prevents pregnancy. It also helps keep infections in semen on the penis or in the vagina from infecting the other partner. So, ang male condom, it works by, by keeping the semen for, from entering the vagina. The male condom is placed on the, on the penis when it becomes erect. It is unrolled all the way to, to the base of the penis while holding the tip of the condom to leave some extra room at the end. Makatabang sa ni nga dili makatakod ang mga infection sa similya sa kinataw sa lalaki or sa vagina. Next is the female condom. This is a thin plastic pouch that is open on one end. The closed end is placed inside the vagina. The condom then lines the walls of the vagina and prevents sperm from getting into the vagina. The female condom also protects against STIS. A new condom must be used each time two women has sex. So, ang female condom, kini siya kay open siya sa usaka tumoy. The outer ring helps to keep the condom in place and is also used for removal. Dayon, when makigilawas ang uska magtiayon, the penis or kinataw sa lalaki enters the vagina through the condom tubra. Then kinahanglan mo gamit o bagong condom matagigayon nga makigilawas ang babae. Because reusing the condom or using more than one at a time diminishes the protective effect of condoms by leading to condom breakage. Next is the sponge. The contraceptive sponge combines barrier and spermicidal method to prevent conception. 
It is a small round sponge made from soft squishy plastic. You put it deep inside your vagina before sex. The sponge covers your cervix and contains spermicide to help prevent pregnancy. So, ang sponge, it fits snugly against the cervix by, by blocking the entrance to the uterus so sperm can get to, to the woman's egg. Ang sponge nagtabon sa cervix o adunay spermicide aron makatabang sa pagpugong sa pagmabdos. Next is the cervical cups. This is a rubber device. It fits inside the vagina right up against the cervix. The cervical cup is always used with a spermicide. So, ang kanayang cervical cup mua omni sa sulod sa puerta batok sa cervix. The cervical cup is inserted into the vagina with spermicide before sex to prevent pregnancy. So, it prevents sperm from entering the uterus. And then the last is the diaphragms. This is a rubber or silicon dome with a firm flexible rim. It fits inside a woman's vagina and covers the opening of the uterus called the cervix. A diaphragm is always used with spermicide. So, ang, ang diaphragms, it fits inside the vagina and prevents sperm passing through the cervix or kanang entrance, entrance yan is a womb. And then, you need it, you need to use it with a spermicide that kills sperm. So, ang difference sa uh, kuan, kaning cervical cups and diaphragms is cervical cups are smaller and shaped differently than diaphragms. So, ang diaphragms are shaped like a bowl and ang um, cervical cups looks like a sailor's hat. So, let's move on with another method which is the permanent method. So, what is the permanent method? Permanent method of contraception are just the, that permanent. They are usually chosen once you have had children and have decided that your family is complete. Permanent method of contraception include female vasectomy and vasectomy. So, ang, ang permanent contraception involves making a person incapable of reproduction. Kasagaran sila gipili sa higayon nga ikaw adunay yung mga anak o nakahukom ka nga imong pamilya kay sakto na. Then, sterilization of men or women is the permanent method of family planning. So, vasectomy in case of men and tubectomy in case of women. Ang sterilization sa lalaki o babayi mao ang permanent nga pamaagi or paagi sa pagplano sa pamilya. So, we call it vasectomy sa kaso sa mga lalaki, then tubectomy sa kaso sa mga babae. So, male sterilization or vasectomy. So, under ano niya kay standard vasectomy or conventional vasectomy. And then, second is non-scalpel vasectomy or NSV. So, first is the standard vasectomy or conventional vasectomy. It is a simple operation performed under local anesthesia. Clamping and cutting both vas deferens and then cut ends are ligate, ligated and folded back to avoid the risk if recanalization. And then plus it is simpler, faster, and less expensive operation. So the standard vasectomy is, this is a procedure that is highly effective at preventing unplanned pregnancy with, with few complications or unintended side effects. A vasectomy will not affect orgasm or ejaculate volume. Kini mas simple, mas paspas o mas barato nga operasyon. And the second one is the non-scalpel vasectomy or the NSV. NSV is the latest and most popular technique. No incision, 
puncturing the stretch stretched skin or scrotal sac with a sharp instrument then locating the vas deferens and cutting and ligating the tube so ang nsv is atol sa vasectomy nga wala scalpel gitawag usab gini og keyhole vasectomy so wala yung mga incision nga gihimo ang ang surgeon mo gamit og sharp instrument aron tuk tus tusukon ang panit sa scrotal sac locating the vas deferens then pagputol og pagligit sa tube so let's move on dari na punta sa female sterilization female sterilization or tubal ligation or tubectomy is a surgical procedure in which the fallopian tubes are cut and sealed in order to prevent sterilization. So, ang female sterilization o saka surgical procedure, diin ang fallopian tubes kay putlon o gibabagan o gitakupan aron mapungan ang mga egg nga na makaabot sa sperm o mahimong first fertilized so, ang pangutan na dari, can you get pregnant after sterilization? So, remember, there there are almost no chance you'll get pregnant after the surgery. But, you should still be aware that there's a small chance, small chance of having an ectopic pregnancy. Kanang ectopic pregnancy na report na nin katong mga niagi pa dung bulan sa atong class sa atong mga classmate then ang ectopic pregnancy is when as when a pregnancy grows outside outside of your uterus usually in the your fallopian tube katong sa fallopian tube ra siya motubo then ectopic pregnancies are rare but serious and they need to be treated of tubal ligation o occlusion method the is partial salpingectomy, clips, and fallop rings, and also electrocoagulation or cauterization. Partial salpingectomy. The pulmonary technique is one of the most frequent methods of tube ligation. Trying a small loop of a tube by suture by cutting off the top segment of the loop. This can be done via laparoscopy or laparo, laparotomy. So, ang, ang pomeroy technique may usaka kasagarang pamaagi sa tubal ligation or it should be done by laparoscopy and laparotomy. Kini ang paghigot sa gamay nga laang sa tube, pinaagi sa pagtahi, pinaagi sa pagputul, sa ibabaw, nga bahin sa loop. A partial cell pangectomy is when, when you have only part of a fallopian tube removed. Clips. It is to clamp the tube with clip to obstruct blood flow and prevent fertilization. So as what we can see in the picture, it's a slide. We can see it on screen. The clip and ang tube. So, the clips are introduced into the abdominal cavity via laparoscopic clip applicator. The clipped portion becomes necrosed due to lack of blood supply. So, ang clips are, are put on. Put on the fallopian tubes to block the sperm and egg from meeting. Next is the fallop rings. It is a tubal rings and circles a small loop of fallopian tube. Block the blood supply resulting in scaring and prevent passage of sperm or egg. The procedure is performed by inserting a laparoscope just under the umbilicus. So, ang fallop rings naglibot sa usa kagamay nga linin sa fallopian tube para magtabang sa supply I mean para magbabag ay para magbabag sa supply sa dugo o pagpugong sa pag-agi sa sperm o itlog 
this is done by inserting a laparoscope sa ilawom sa pusod. Is the electrocoagulation or cauterization. So, electric current is used to coagulate or burn a small position of each fallopian tube. This procedure is done via laparoscopy. So, ang electrocoagulation, electrocoagulation rather, mao ang proseso sa paguba sa tisyo or, or pagputol sa humok ng tisyo. Gamit ang heat conduction or electric current, gikan sa metal nga probe nga gipainit sa kuryente and it is done paagi sa laparoscopy. Ang, ang laparoscopy is a type of surgical procedure that allows the a surgeon to, to access the inside of the abdomen or the tummy and pelvis without having a to make large or without having to make large incision in the skin. The, the procedure known as keyhole keyhole surgery or minimally invasive surgery. And these are the references. So that's I think that's all for my report about barrier method and permanent method. That's all. I the end. Thank you for watching. Hope that you have learned from this video recording report. So thank you guys and God bless.